All right, guys, got some goodies for the Jeep today. Uh, little hint, we've got one of these on the front and we liked it so much, saw how beefy it was, we ordered one from the back. So by the shape of the box, you may be able to tell what it is. I already tore the staples out. So without further ado, we have a beefy Adams rear drive shaft for the Jeep. This is exactly how it came from Adams. They have a box over here, that says bolts and shirt. So if we pull that open, we've got our bolts in here with a little bit of red Loctite. Got a nice Adams drive shaft shirt. This makes number two. Can't wait to get this thing bolted in. We've had a Pro Comp rear drive shaft in the Jeep ever since we did the Rubicon Express lift. And really the reason we went Pro Comp is because that's what four wheel parts had in stock uh, at the time. Pro Comp is kind of their house brand. So we've run that, never had any major issues with it, but it's just not the quality or the beef that you get with Adams. I mean, this thing is just unlike any other. So obviously it's a, a double carden CV style shaft since we've got a SYE kit on single U joint double u joint yeah can't wait to get it in first thing we're going to need to do installing the atoms is obviously remove our old rear drive shaft like i said this is a pro comp cd style shaft haven't had any major issues out of it just doesn't hold up to adam's quality though and love running adam stuff really impressed with their front drive shaft so ordered one for the rear that way when we go to Windrock this year we can take this one as a spare so you're going to have four bolts connecting the cv the uh, double carden end of the shaft to the yoke on the transfer case i'm going to start by removing those with a little eight millimeter end wrench may be a little difficult may have to get something to get some leverage on this because this little wrench is only about three inches long so we're gonna start breaking these loose and then we'll catch up with you after. I'm gonna leave one in just so the drive shaft doesn't somehow slip out of here while we're working on the pinion side. So now we'll do the same thing, but on the pinion end, and there's four, four more bolts holding the drive shaft to the pinion yoke. I'm just gonna remember about how torqued down these bolts were. So we'll go back to the same torque. I think we could probably get a torque wrench on these there's no way I could get my torque wrench on the other ones on the transfer case side. These are a little shorter. So there's what they call the strap that retains the U-joint. We're gonna clean these up a little bit before we put our new shaft in. And there's the other side. So now all we've got holding our shaft in is the one bolt on the transfer case yoke. So we'll spin around and get this thing off. Joint on the pinion side doesn't want to come off. There it goes. Old shaft is out. Be careful, don't just slide the atoms in place. It comes with some tape wrapped around these U joints. Definitely don't want to be putting it on with this tape on there. All right, looks like it's in. So we're getting it bolted up. Little hand, it helps if you have your transfer case shifter in neutral so you can spin this 
transfer case yoke and get the shaft lined up. So Adam sends you some red Loctite and these are the transfer case end bolts. So just a little dab of red Loctite should be all we need. So we've got our transfer case put back in two wheel drive so the drive shaft can't spin. We've got all four transfer case yoke bolts just snugged up. So now that the transfer case can't spin, we're gonna go behind and do a final torque on them. Then we'll move on to putting the pinion yoke back on. And I'm just going by memory on torque on these. Basically as tight as you can go with such a tiny wrench. It's gonna be my philosophy here. Draft shaft's gonna try to spin on you a little bit, but it won't be able to go too far because you're in gear. This end's pretty simple. You just take your strap. We took off before, we've already got this side on. Got two bolts per side. Set it over that U-joint. Line your bolts up. Sorry, I know you guys aren't at the best angle to watch this. A drive shaft is one of the easier things you can do. This is going to have taken me about an hour or so. Just after work. Once all four are in, just go back, torque them down. Again, we're just going off the memory on these. I'm sure there's a torque spec. My torque spec is as tight as this tiny little three inch box wrench will go without killing your hands. So it's really pretty difficult to mess up a drive shaft install. We'll say the one thing you want to look for, that little notch in the yoke right there, the U-joint needs to be notched and held inside of that. That's what that's for, to retain these caps. Because the U-joint has these two caps, and if they come off, then your bearings are all exposed and everything. So as long as it's seated in this on both sides, you're good to go. So you see that side, we spin around, see this side as well seated in this little groove right here last but not least remember to take your grease gun shoot some grease in this fitting pretty sure adams comes with all the grease you need you probably see it coming out of there just in case i always shoot a dab in here just to be on the safe side there's your brand new adams drive shaft looks beautiful under here just one final look. Pretty simple install. Like I said, we were at it maybe an hour, if that. Really nice looking drive shaft. Fit perfectly. We have to go take the Jeep out real quick, make sure we don't have any weird noises. Recheck our torque on everything, and we'll be good to ride. The stickers rotated the wrong way, but this is an Adams as well. This is our front drive shaft. You see it's taken a beating already. Still doing great for us. Thanks for watching this short episode of Everyday Off-Road. Hope you enjoyed watching the install. If you liked the video, please leave it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We'll catch you in the next one.